Welcome to 8 Minute Crimes. We put out multiple videos each week. We are currently working on getting some exclusive interrogations, so make sure you are subscribed. That is the best way to support the channel. Like and subscribe if you want to see more. Enough rambling, let's get into it. Destiny Madrid was questioned by police regarding the brutal double murder of Johnny Clark and Lisa Straub on the night of January 30th, 2011 in Holland, Ohio. Her and the man ultimately convicted of the crime, Sam Williams, were in a relationship. And she says that she was with him the whole night that the crime was committed. Here's how her interrogation went. Where does she live? Um, 5930 East Benelux. Those are, are those apartments there? Or is no, it a house? It's a house. It's a house? It's off of Alexis Road. Alexis and Bennett? Yeah. Right where it's, the little girl got killed. Not yeah. Know, that lady yep. that run right, over? Right, that street right there, yeah. Okay, I know where it is. Yeah. yeah. It's by, it's in front of the, behind the Piccadilly apartments. Right. Yeah. You're working? No, I'm a full-time student at Owens. Right now you're getting, you said you're getting your GED, mm -hmm. but then you're going to go into? Criminal justice. After I take my compass test. <laughs> What's that? Um, it places me in where I need to be in to take my college courses. It's like, oh, okay. it's like a placement test to GED. see where, like, okay. where I need to be if I need help with anything okay. else. Alright. So you, where did you go to high school at? Wait. And when did you leave? What grade? Um, I left in, I want to say March of 08. Okay. I had to get, I had to withdraw myself due to an incident that happened in 07 of October. And they didn't, they finally didn't do nothing until after I turned 18. So it was either they expelled me or I personally withdrew myself. So I just withdrew myself. I didn't want the expulsion on my record or okay. anything. So I just personally withdrew myself. And then I went to Phoenix downtown on Jefferson. And that lasted maybe like four months. And then I just quit school completely. Just okay. dropped out. <laughs> um, what was your boyfriend's name again that dropped you off? Brandon Henry. He's, we're, at the moment right now talking we've been talking for the past three months okay i've known him since i was like little so you're in the neighborhood i've been i've okay. lived with my grandma on and off for since i was a baby okay okay so you're seeing more of each other your friends but you're right okay but like right. we're childhood friends but then we're also like eventually you're probably gonna get end up getting together but we don't know at this moment. Like we're just yeah. trying to figure each other out, okay. basically. All right. Dusty, you're down here of your own free will. Right. Okay. You know that door is unlocked. You can leave at any time before right. we start talking. Okay. You understand that. Right. Okay. Because this, uh, we want to talk to you about some serious stuff. Right. Okay. Do you have any idea what it is we want to talk to you about? Sam Williams. Okay. I got kind of figured it out when my grandmother called me. She's like, "Please start." First, I thought it was the incident that happened last night at the bar because I did talk to the cops about the incident at the bar last night. But then she's like, "It's about Sam," and I'm like, "Okay, right away, got up, got dressed." <clears throat> Listen, we're down to a very serious juncture in this case. Okay, mm -hmm. uh, it's incumbent upon you to tell us everything right. you know. Uh, cooperate with us fully uh, otherwise and this is not a threat we're just letting you know this exists the chances exist you could be charged all right right and I don't think you want that and I don't think we want that for you I think we'd rather have you tell us everything you know right. okay so tell the detective everything you know here at this point well tell me how long have you known Sam Well, okay. I know I know Sam. I didn't start knowing him until December of 2010. I know... You met him then? That's when I first started. Well, I met him back in October through on Facebook. We started talking on Facebook. And um, I've known him because 
I used to date DJ Hummer, which was one of his good friends that was friends with his ex-wife. And I know I I seen him around. Okay. Never really hung out with him, never really talked to him until October of 2010. Started talking to him on Facebook. Never like met him in person or nothing. We just, you know, chatted over online. That's it. In December of 2010, Johnny J's house got raided, which was on Morrison, where he was at. He was hanging out there. Where Sam was at? Where Sam was at. Who's no, Johnny J? Johnny J. Willett. He, his house got raided. There was, I think three, it was Sam and three other guys that was there, plus Johnny. The Do house you know got, any other names? Uh, no, I just know Johnny J and Sam. Okay, go ahead. Johnny J took the full blame for Sam and the three other guys. Sam got out, I guess they, you know, they brought him down here, talked to him, whatever, see what, you know, like you guys are doing with me, talk mm -hmm. to him. He called me that night. And like, like I said, I, I talked to him. Sometimes I would talk to him on the phone. But he called me that night and I was on my way back from Detroit. And, Cause my grandpa, you know, he's, he was in the army. So he had like this army get together, whatever in Detroit. So I'm on my way back and it was storming and would, snow and everything. I'm in the car talking to him and he's like, I want to see you. Who said I want to see you? Okay. Sam was like, you know, I need, I need talking somebody. to you on your cell phone. Talking to me on my cell phone. He's like, what cell phone did you have at the time? What number? Oh, man. I, you know what? I've been through so many phones. It was through page plus. I don't remember the number. You'd know it if you heard it? I, I, I would know it if I heard it. Okay. Yes. All right. Well, that's something we might check here shortly. Okay. I mean, I can find it out and let you guys know. I think it's a four one nine seven two six, maybe. I'm not sure. I can, I could possibly ask my grandma because she keeps all the, like our records of my numbers at seven one six. You think so? Seven two six. Seven two four one nine seven two six. This would have been last December that yes. he called you. Yes. On. And let me see. Seven two six eight nine seven four, maybe. Possibly. Possibly. Okay. I, I want to say I'm not... I'll put a question mark. I'm not quite sure on that Okay, one. all right. But he called me. I'm on the phone with him. My phone was like getting really bad reception. <clears throat> so I'm like, look, I'll call you when I get home. I'm not that far away. It's storming. It's snowing. We're stuck on the expressway because there's this big old cloud of snow coming and everybody just completely stopped. Because, you know, there was just no way. A semi you almost, slow. Yeah, we were just moving slow. A semi almost went off the road. So I'm like, look call you when I get home and he's like no I really need to talk to you and I'm like what's going on he's like Johnny J's house just got raided I just got you know they just talked to me I need I need to sit down and I need to, I need somebody to talk to he's like and I really think I could talk to you personally because you know he's like I've known you for so many years but I don't he's like I think I can trust you so I'm like well, okay what yeah. was it raided for I think they I think they raided him for drugs okay it was they they found so many drugs in his house and with so many money with so much money or whatever. I he he only told me so much of the details. Okay. He didn't tell me everything. He just said I you know, I need to talk to you. I'm like okay you know, whatever. All right. I get home. He picks me up. I call All right. him. All right. What number did he call you from? Do you remember? Um four one nine nine one seven. Hold on nine one seven. Seven zero two one. Seven zero two. <laughs> yeah, I had to look at the phone. So he called like, you from that number. Yeah, that was his old cell phone number. I don't know his current one right now because he was calling me. I just got just started talking to him again because me and him I got into a big old fight. I stopped talking to him. Okay. All I right. I don't know his new number. So this will be the first time you've actually met him when he comes over. Right. Well, I met him before, but me and him by ourselves. Okay. So this is in December. Right. You just got home from. Wherever. I okay. want to say it was December third or fourth. I could find out from my grandma because oh, that's all right. I mean, it was that was the same date that was, the party was, so I can find out the date. But I want to say it was either December third or December fourth. So he comes over. Right. I call him when I got home. I said, "Look, I'm home now. You know, let me change out of my dress clothes. Give me about five ten minutes, or whatever. If you if wherever you're at, you can leave now. And, you know, you know where I live. Pull up in front." Be born one or twice, and you know, I'll come out. He comes, he calls me. He's like, I'm outside, I didn't want to be because it was like almost 11 o'clock at night. He's like, I don't know if your grandparents are sleeping or not. And he's like, No, I didn't want to, you know, wake them up. So I'm like, Okay, respect it. So I told him, I said, Well, give me a minute, I'll put my shoes on, I'll be outside. 
get outside, get in the car, and we go to his sister's house, which was right there in Idaho. She don't live there no more. I don't know where she lives now. But we went there, and we talked, and he's like, I don't know what to do. You know, and he's like, I don't know if I should testify, blah, blah, blah. I said, well, look, do what you have to do. You know, that's your own choice if you decide to say whatever you wanted to say. And he was like, all right. That, at that point, you know, we didn't do nothing else. We stayed at the house. We watched movies, whatever, talked to his sister. And that was it. That was the night. Went home the next day, whatever. I basically, me and him, we actually got together on December 13th. Like, was actually a couple at that time. He tells me... Yeah, he, he, he's like, look, I have a baby mama. She's due in February with my second kid. And I'm like, okay. And I'm like, well, you know, does she know about me? You know, I just, I don't want to see her. I don't, you know, I don't want us to be together. And she mm -hmm. sees us and then it starts a big old thing. I said, you know, does she know me? And she's, he's like, well, I told her about you. I told her that we were together. She's fine with it. And I'm like, okay, like. And I never had no problem with her the whole time we was the other. Did not have no problem with her. And that was a very shocker to me. Very understanding woman. Right. And I'm like, and he was like, well, she don't want to go under, be under no stress because they could put her in early labor. And I'm like, okay. Which I understand. So I never talked to her. I've, we seen, I've seen her, but no altercation, no problem, nothing. Okay. And then he finally... It was like when, let me see, I want to say that beginning of May or the middle of May, he goes to Stryker for 30 days, was writing me. I have the letters at my house from him. And she comes and she's like, look, I need the letters from him. He said that he's been talking to you and he's been writing you. I need the letters. I'm like, okay, whatever. I gave her a copy of the letters. I said, look, I'm not going to give you the originals just because I don't know if it's true or not. I'll give you a copy of them. That's not a problem with me. I will give you a copy. Gave her a copy. He calls me three-way. And I'm like, look, did you tell Starla that, you know, that you've been writing me? He's like, no. I'm like, well, she came to my house. Not in, like, a disrespectful way, not getting all mad or anything. I'm like, but she called me, and she came to my house. I said, you know, is she lying or are you lying? He was like, she did it on her own. And I'm like, okay, whatever. I let it be after that. Let it go. I'm like, you know what, I'm not going to sit here, I'm not going to argue with you. Okay. She just had her baby, I'm not going to argue with you. I let it go. He gets out of jail, we started arguing because of that whole situation. I did not talk to him at all, I told him, I said, look, I don't want nothing to do with you. Leave me alone, be with her, you guys have a kid together, be with her, leave me alone. I don't want to be in that picture. I'm like, you know... You didn't even, when we first got together, you didn't even tell me that you had a baby mama. I knew your baby, your first baby mama because I used to hang out with her. I'm like, but you did not tell me about Star. So I'm like, you know what, leave me alone. Don't call me no more. Don't text me. Don't come by my house. You know, just leave me alone. He left me alone. Recently, and that was back in June, I didn't talk to him for July or August, but in September, towards the end, I just started recently talking to him. And Once he was arrested? After he was arrested. Well, no, before he got arrested. I was talking, because he, he got out, he went to jail in May. I want to say it was either the beginning or the middle, I'm not sure, but he got 30 days in striker. He got out in June. I didn't talk to him July, August. A little bit of September, but towards the end of September, before they arrested him, which I want to say it was like three weeks ago, maybe, I started talking to him. I seen him. He came over to my ex-boyfriend's cousin's house. We were all sitting outside, talking, you know, just catching up. And me and him was talking about getting back together, but I was like, you know what? I want to take it slow because I don't want to deal with the drama with you and your baby mama or whatever. So, you know, we'll just take it slow at first. And then I get the call, and they're like, Sam went to jail for murder, and I'm like, are you kidding me? Like, what do you mean? And they're like, he went to jail. I'm like, shut up. You're, you're playing with me. You know, don't play with me. They're like, no, Dustin, we're being serious. And I'm like, shut up. So I didn't believe it at first. So me, personally, I called down to booking. I was like, do you have a Samuel Todd Williams? 
They're like, what's the birthday? I said, 8-23-87. They're like, yeah, we have them. And I'm like, can I know his charges? And they're like, two counts of burglary and two counts of murder charges. And I'm like, are you serious? And we hung up. And I called my ex-boyfriend's cousin, Angelica, called her. I said, when did they arrest him? They were like, she's like, today at 6 o'clock, they picked him up on a warrant and this. And I'm like, you know, okay. So I'm like, I'm like, well, who was it? You know, who are the two people that he's getting charged with this for? She's like, Johnny Clark and Lisa Stroud. And I'm like, that was back in January. I'm like, he was with me that night. And I want to say, I'm not quite sure, but I want to say that we had went to the Bedford Hotel that night. But I'm not sure. I haven't went to the hotel. I don't know if I can go to the hotel and get the like records unless I have a warrant. I'm not sure if I can like go in there and be like, look, you know, can I get the record of me? Because the hotels were in my name in Bedford. They were in my name. So I don't know if I can like go down there and ask them, like, you know, can you at least give me the dates or whatever. But I know that night on January 31st, we were at the bottom line watching the football games with his cousin Larry Gilhouse, and it was his cousin's 21st birthday. Me, Larry, and Sam left, went to go pick up Larry's car, and we went back. Me and Sam went back to his sister's. He had to pick a couple, pick up a pair of clothes, and I want to say it was that same night we went back to the hotel, but I'm not sure if that was the night or if it was the next night. But I know one of the nights we were at the hotel because him and his sister had got into it. But I, I want to say I'm not quite sure if it's that night or the night after. I'm not sure. Where's the Bedford? Um, on Telegraph, right? You go down Telegraph, it's Alexis. It's like the state line, okay. and it's on the right-hand side. It's on the right hand. What's it look like? Looks like a, I don't know. It's, it's not. It's like a one-level hotel. Do you remember a color or anything? It's brown. It's Bedford, uh, Bedford Inn Suites. Okay. Do you remember the desk clerk? Um, I think she was an Arabic, maybe. I think it was an Arab lady. Yeah, I'm okay. not sure. Do you recall how you paid for it? Cash. Do you have to show an ID? Yeah. How many times have you been to the Bedford? Twice. Who with? Sam. What's so important about these letters? Nothing, just, we were just talking. And he, the first letter I got from him was stating that he didn't know if it was like my real address, so he basically said if I get the letter, write him back, which I did, because he, he had somebody drive past, drive past my house, get my address, and because he didn't know my address personally, like by heart, he was like, look, I don't know if this is your address, if it is, write me back and let me know, whatever, so I wrote him back, he wrote me back twice, so, I mean, it, it's really like... Well, why did she want a cop? Because she didn't like the fact that I was writing him while he was in jail. She told he told me that they were not together at that time, but she told me that they were. So when he got out of jail, I told him I said, "Look, I don't know who's lying. I don't know if to believe you or to believe her." I said, "But you know what? I don't want to deal with it. I don't want the drama. Let me let me be." Do you still have those letters? Yes, okay. I still have them there at home. Do you know Cam? I went to high school with him. Okay. What can you tell us about Cam? Not a good dude. I, personally, he's not a good dude. I know his sister and all that, but I don't know Sam like that. Or Cameo like that. Like okay. I just Cam know he went to high school. I went to high school with him. He's mainly all about the trouble. Cam and Sam are good friends? Yeah. Kind of since childhood, right? I think so, yeah. Have you ever been with Sam when Camille's been along? No. Never? Never, nope. Not once at all. Do you drive? I do, but I don't have a car. I have a license, but I don't drive. 
I don't have a car personally. Whose car do you use when you need a car? Oh, my grandmother's. Okay, what's she have? Uh, two, I want to say 2004 Alero, silver. Silver? Yeah. Is that the one but, that's parked on the side? Yeah, she, but when I need to use it, she drives with me. Or she'll drive or I'll drive. She can't see really good at night, so when it comes like nighttime, I drive when she needs me. But during the day, she's fine. She can drive during the day, but it's just towards the night comes, she can't drive. <clears throat> Why, when um, somebody you were told that what what murders, mm -hmm. and they said Johnny Clark and Lisa Straw, right away you knew what they were talking about. Yeah, I because I I like like I said I've seen it on the news and you back in January. The exact day? I, I remembered it because she's like it's January thirty first, and I'm like he was with me because it was. That was, I want to say, six days after my 21st birthday. And he wasn't with me on my birthday. But he was like, because I, I don't know if he, he said he was out of town. I don't know where he was. Because I didn't talk to him for like four days at a time. I did not talk to him. We were fighting. Did not talk to him whatsoever. Finally, he was like, look, I'm sorry for the argument we had, whatever. Can we meet up? We met up, took me out. Went to the bar, had a couple of drinks. Went to his, his sister's house. Like I said, I want to say it's that same night that we went back to the Bedford Hotel, but I'm not sure if it's that night or the night after. All right, what if I clear it up for you? What if I tell you that you're not on the video at the bottom line on that night? What do you mean? The bottom line has video. Right. So you or Sam are not on that video that night inside the bottom line. Or whatever bar that was, was it the bottom one? Yeah. yeah. We were sitting right by the front door. Like, oh, okay. that table by the front door, it was like right. right there. There was four seats. And I don't know who the other guy that was with us, but I know it was me, Sam, and Larry. And then there was another person, but I don't know what his name was. But we were sitting, like, here's the door and the table, like, right there. We were sitting right there. Like, what was on TV that night? The NFC football game. The NFC. Oh, the championship game? Yeah. Yep. It was, I want to say it was a Sunday, to be honest, I want to say it was a Sunday that we were there. Because Sundays they normally have karaoke, but I think the karaoke was not there that night. So it was either a Sunday or it might have been a Tuesday, but I'm pretty sure it was a Sunday. Because the NFC football game, the championship game was on that night. Did, uh, has Sam ever come over and asked you to drive his car? A couple times. Not a whole lot, though. I've drove his car maybe twice at the most. And what instances were those? Just, like, going to, like, Rasford to pick up somebody because he said he didn't have a license, and I do, so he didn't want to drive out to Rasford, so he went out to Rasford, picked up his cousin, dropped them off, and... He would drive once we get back to the east side. You get off the east side much? Kind of, sort of. My mom's house is like more like the getaway house. Like if I want to just like get off the east side for a little bit and just, you know, leave all the drama behind, I go out to my mom's, on, which is on the west end on Alexis. It's like 15 minutes, not even 15 minutes away from my grandmother's. Like that's where I go out. And I just spend the weekend out there or a couple days out there and I just relax and you know, if I'm, like, feeling stressed out, that's where I go. Like, my mom's house is the getaway. Like, m nobody knows where my mom lives. Nobody. Okay. Sam, Sam's been to my house, my mom's house. My mom wasn't there. My dad was. My stepdad, not my real dad, my stepdad. He met my stepdad. He only, he was, he only been out there one time. And that was it. But he's the only one that knows where my mom lives. And he knows where my grandma lives. Never took him anywhere else, none of my other family, none of that, because, you know, like, I didn't, you know what I'm saying, like, I didn't feel comfortable bringing him around my family just yet, so I basically kept him from my family like a secret. Like, the only ones that knew about him was my grandma and my dad. Okay. It was the only two that knew about him. Have you talked to Starla lately? No, and she, my, grandma my grandma told me on September... 
26th or 27th, Star came to my house. Mm -hmm. And she gave me a, descrip a description. I know what Star looks like. Star, she's tall, white girl, blonde hair, wears glasses, she's kind of heavy. My grandma gave me another description. She told me that it was a girl about my height, skinny, black hair, no gla wears glasses. And I'm like, that's not Star. So, I honestly, I don't know who she brought to my house, but my grandma did say that they came in a gold car, kind of like hers, but a little bit smaller. She said there was a white girl driving with a bunch of kids in the back. What'd they want? She wanted, the girl that came knocking on my door wanted to talk to me about this whole situation. And I'm like, she, my grandma called me after the girl, the girl left. And I'm like, look, I don't know who that is. Next time they come to the house, just call the cops because I don't know who that is. I know that's not Star. You know, Star's tall. She's a white girl. She has blonde hair. She wears glasses and she's kind of heavy. I'm like, but the description that you're giving me, I don't know who that is personally. So if they're coming to my house asking me, asking you about me, and I don't know who that is, if they come again, call the cops because I don't know who that but is. Do you know what they wanted? They wanted, she wanted to talk to me about Sam going to jail and why would that she wanted to know where I was and what hotel I was at with him and you know that night and what did we do and all that because she said she's like my son or my son my boyfriend is on trial for the death penalty because of this and I need to know where they was at because we need to tell his lawyer to get him out of this and my grandma was like I don't know what you're talking about I don't know who you are okay. you know so they were there looking for the alibi. Right. For Sam. Right. And you provided one. I didn't know why I did. I was not home at that time. Okay. Was not home. My grandma called me after she left. Okay. I was at, I had stayed the night at Brandon's house. And like I said, I want to say it was September 26th or 27th. It was on a Tuesday. Okay. So, and I'm like, I don't know who that is. And I guess the lady asked for my number. She asked for my first name and my last name. My grandma's like, there's a lot of destinies out here, and I'm not going to give you my gra my granddaughter's last name. You know what I'm saying? Because you, you, cause she, my grandma asked the girl, a lady, she said, you're looking for destiny who? She's like, well, I don't know her last name. Starla knows my first and my last name. Starla knows what I look like, my first and last name. And she, my grandma told me that the, the lady did not know my last name. And I'm like, right away, that's not Star. Star knows my last name. Star knows my first name. And Star would not come to my house. She would she would end up calling me. And then the lady told her, like, I need to talk to Destiny. She knows where I live and she knows my number. I don't know Starla's number. I just know that Sam lives on Kelsey. But Sam told me that Star does not live with him. When's the last time you talked to, stay, uh, to Sam from the jail? I have not talked to him from the jail. He has talked to you through other people? He told my ex boy my ex boyfriend's cousin for me to write him and I didn't. I wrote him twice. Cause I'm like, look, I need to know what's going on because you know, everybody's talking about that I'm gonna have to testify against you. I'm confused about everything. I'm like, but I'm putting stuff together little by little, like I'm remembering stuff and I'm putting it all together and I'm like I need to know what's going on. I'm like, Star came to my house. You know, okay. I need to know. Like, you need to tell me what's going on. Have like, you ever been out by Springfield Mall? You know, or, or that Spring Meadows Mall area? You ever been out there? Where's that? You go out Airport Highway? I've been out there with him once. You were out there with him? Yes. Where at? At some hotel. I, it's by Sam's Club. Behind, what is it? It's Burger King, and I think there's Chili's, the restaurant Chili's. That whole, there's yes. a bunch of hotels yes. behind there. Behind I, Bob Evans. Right. I I don't know which hotel I could tell you. I can show you, but I don't remember. You that remember time. what day that was? His son's birthday, and I want to say it's January fifth. Fifth. We had stayed out there one night, and that hotel was in his name. I don't know how if you, if you pay by every credit card, debit card, cash. Don't know, but I know that was in his name. 